Okay, so her question was, how do you print and cut elements from the Silhouette online store? And there's two parts to that question. There are two different kinds of elements in the Silhouette online store. And I'm just going to click into my library. There are elements that have a PNC, which means print and cut. And that means this element is all designed, all colored. Everything's in there to print and cut this. So I'm going to bring that, double click on that, and bring that into the software. And you can see there are no paper pieces, paper piecing pieces here. So you can't, I mean, you could break this up. It would be a whole other process. But basically, if we turn on the cut lines, this little guy is set to print just like he looks and it's going to cut around that red outline. So it's all set to print and cut. So we'll put him up here. That's a PNC image. Now if you go to, let's go back into my library, and you find an um, object or an element that you want that does not have the PNC. What that means is that element is going to come in and it's going to provide you only with the cut lines. So let's take, we'll take this guy for instance, this cute giraffe. I'm going to bring him in by double clicking. And you see he is not a print and cut element. He is not already colored. If you put him all together you're still only going to have cut lines. So what that means is this guy is made to Either A, you can cut him out in different pieces, different colors of paper. B, you could fill him in and color him yourself and then cut him out as a flat dimension. Or C, you could fill in each piece with a color, print it, and then cut it. So that's the two different types of elements. Um, I'm not going to use this one. just. For the sake of time, that one would take a while to color, so let's find something a little easier to recreate. Okay, so we have this owl. Now, what I do, if I want the owl to look exactly like I saw it in the Silhouette store, if I'm not going to use my own papers and my own, own creativity and my own ideas or pattern papers to dress him up, what I would do is go into my library and I will do a screenshot of him. On a Mac you just hold shift command and four and I just do a screenshot and then I go back to my mat and I'm on a Mac so I can just bring this guy in and I just have him there for reference for a color picker and I've shown I have another video on how to do this but you can see this piece right, well first thing we need to do is click on it, ungroup. Okay, so what that does is make all these pieces individual. So this piece we can see is the body and he is this pink color. So what you can do is go over here to your fill color window. I clicked on, you click on the bucket here to get the color palette up. Hit the eyedropper and we're just going to sample this pink and it will fill that in. Now this is the top of the owl, so I'm going to, again, click on the eyedropper, sample that pink, or if it's here, it's already chosen, but either way. This piece, we can see, is this lighter pink. We're going to fill that in. We can kind of start to build him. Actually, this piece is the orange because this is what everything is layered on. So here we go. We'll start filling him in. And you might want to zoom in and make sure you get a, a really good idea on size. His eyes are white. Put those in. These are the actual eyeballs. We'll make those black. This is his nose, which is this orange color. His flag is, we can again grab the eyedropper, grab the flag, 
oops, I'm sorry, I didn't select the flag. Select the flag, grab the eyedropper, grab the blue, and this is a brown shade. Pick that up, okay, put those together. So there we've made the guy, the owl, there we've made the owl. So here we have the owl all put together. Now if we wanted, we could just print him as a flat image and just have it cut around the edges and this would be one piece. And in order to do that, we have to change some cut lines. So let's go over to our cut window, and right now, it's set to cut all of these elements. We wouldn't want that to happen. So the easiest thing to do is just to select everything and hit no cut. If we turned off our cut lines. There are no cut lines on here. Now what I would do, there's other ways to do this, but I think the easiest way would be to select trace area. So we are going to go up to the trace window, select trace area, and draw a box around him. Now let's turn off the high pass filter, turn up the threshold, trace outer edge. Now let's go to our cut lines. And if you see, it's not going to cut through, it's not going to cut the insides. So we're going to select that line, cut edge. Okay, so now we'll go back to our home window. So. We want to group this cut line and the image together. Right click, group, and that's going to cut as one image. And that's just a flat image. It's not going to cut all the different pieces, it's just going to cut as one image. This, if we go to the cut lines, let's turn them on, cut edge, go back home so you can see them. This is one flat image, and there are two totally different ways to get through them. Again, when you go into your library or you go into the Silhouette store and you buy an image, if it has PNC by it, you're going to get this. You're not going to have to go through coloring him and changing everything out. This guy, you can. Now, let me show you the other advantage of this scenario. Let's undo everything we've done. I'm going to take you back to, and that's the great thing about the silhouette, is you can just keep hitting undo, 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 and it remembers. So now we're back to separate pieces. The good thing about having this scenario is, say we want to dress this guy up. Why don't we put, instead, we're going to cut him out in a pattern paper. And we're going to change this piece to that. And for his flag, we're going to use something like that. And his body, maybe we want it. Oh, I don't know. Let's, let's do teal. So you get more bang for your buck with this option because now I can cut, I can go through the same scenario, turn off my cut lines, trace him do an outline or if I, you know I could I could cut this out in different pieces and piece it together say I want to use uh, foam dots and pop him up in different areas pop his eyes up um, you know make the flags separate so you have you have a lot more options with this style of a image as opposed to this because no matter what you do even if you release compound path there's nothing you can do to really pull this guy apart. So if, you want, if you're interested in just a flat image, the PNC is the way to go. If you're interested in maybe changing him out or you're interested in cutting him out in different papers that you already have, different pattern papers or whatnot, I would go with the standard cut files. So let's put him back together and finish, wrap this up, oops, 
I guess it would be easier to pull him down this way. And I'm not actually going to cut this, so I'm not worried about lining him up totally right, but it's grouping back together. So if you wanted to cut, print and cut this, again, you would just go over to your paper settings. Oops, wrong window. The one with the black box with the red square. Choose letter. Go over to your registration marks. Turn them on. Place them where you want on your paper. And make sure this is off the mat. I'm going to go back over to my... Okay, we're good. So you turn on your registration marks, you place them on the paper the way you want, and then you would hit send to printer. And then you would print. When it comes out of the printer, you're going to put it on your mat, exactly like it looks here in the upper left corner, and you're going to send it to the silhouette. And then you can click skip printing. Continue. Detect registration marks before cutting and you will hit detect automatically. I don't have my silhouette actually on right now, but it would go through it and it will say, it will pull this into the silhouette and look for this mark, this mark, and this mark known as the registration marks. If it finds them all, it will say registration marks detected successfully and it should find them. Um, if it doesn't, nine times out of ten, you probably hit load media on your silhouette, not your load mat button. That's nine times out of ten. If, if it doesn't detect them, that's why. So just double check. If you have uh, hit load media, load media, eject it, and then load it back in using the load mat button and try it again because the screen won't go away until... You either detect them manually. If you need to do that, you what you do is just use the arrow keys and put the eye right over this and then hit continue and it'll find them that way. But I've only had to do that maybe once and that was because I changed the size of the registration marks. So I hope that helps and answers your question. Um, if there's anything else you guys would like to see, let me know. Thanks. Bye.